Muse for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, Musers? John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And a few weeks ago, in one of my uh, weekly updates, uh, I showcased this website here with the side slide menu. Uh, so here I have the open button here in the upper left. And if I click, we have this nice side slide menu. So this was created with the Muse Motion widget. And this menu here is an Adobe Muse menu. And you can basically add anything you'd like to the side slide menu right within Adobe Muse. And with the Muse Motion widget, you can have it slide from left to right when you click the open button. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to showcase how to create this side slide menu with the Muse Motion widget. And we also use the responsive browser height widget uh, to, to make the this panel here 100% um, uh, height. So as I scroll down, we see the menu stays fixed and full height within the browser. I also use the scroll show widget here to reveal these images. And I might showcase that uh, in this tutorial or I'll do another video tutorial on the scroll show widget uh, on revealing images like this as well. Uh, so we're going to be using the Muse Motion widget and the responsive browser height widget. And uh, both those widgets can be found at museforyoushop.com. And here you can click subscribe. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for $39 a year. Here we have the Muse Motion widget. Uh, so you can preview, uh, check out the different features. And uh, this video is going to be part of the GSAP and Adobe Muse series because we are using the Muse Motion widget, which is powered uh, by GSAP from Green GreenSock, which is the GreenSock animation platform. It's a really powerful animation platform. Uh, so it's, it's really great that it can be used within Muse with the Muse Motion widget. So we're also using the responsive browser height widget, which is down here. Uh, right here, we're using the responsive browser height widget. And with both th these widgets, you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for $39 a year. Uh, we're also going to be going to be using the image cursor widget to add a nice pointer cursor to the open button, uh, which is also in the widget in the shop here as well. Um, so I've set up the this site here. Uh, we're just going to follow these instructions. Um, you know, I have one through 15. We're just going to follow it step by step to create the side slide menu. Uh, and we're actually going to use a state button as well. Um, and the state button is built right into Adobe Muse. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started. So step one is add a state button. So to do that, we're going to go to object right up here. And we're going to go to insert widget. And we're going to go to button. And I'm going to click on state button. Okay, and I'm just going to place it right here. And when you first add a state button, we have the state button and we have this text frame within the state button. Uh, we don't need this text frame, so I'll go ahead and just click in it or click in the text frame and just uh, select delete. So now we have this empty state button. And one thing you'll notice when you first add the state button is that you have these rounded corners um, all around the, the state button. Uh, so I just want it to be a perfect um, or just angled and not kind of cornered there. So I'll select the state button. And then right up here, we have the corner radius option in the upper control bar. And you can click on each corner to remove uh, the corner radius. So now it's just uh, a rectangle with no, with no uh, corner radius. All right, so there we have the state button. So that was step two, actually remove corner radius and states from state button. So yeah, we also want to remove the states. So if I go ahead and preview in the browser at the moment, if I go to file, uh, preview page in browser, and I hover over the state button, we can see it turns black. And that's because it has a different rollover state and it has a different active state as well. Um, so here I'll click on the state button. And right up here in the upper left within Adobe Muse, we have the states panel. So here if I click on the normal state, we see we have normal, rollover, mouse down, and active. So here we can see rollover is black. It actually shows us the color right here within the states panel. And if I click on it, we can see that the state panel turns black. Uh, one thing I can do here, I can either change the color uh, to the same as the normal color, or I can just click on this trash can symbol to delete the state and reset it to the default state, which would be the normal state. All right, so I'll go ahead and click the trash can symbol. And just like that, all the states are uh, the same as the normal state. 
Perfect. And the same if it had a different state for active or mouse down, you could just click on the trash can symbol and it would delete the state. So the reason I want to do that is because I don't want to roll over state or I don't want the, the color of the menu to change when I hover over it once it's opened. Okay. So that was step two. Step three is set the width of the state button and place it at the side and top of the page. So for my menu, um, the this is what's going to slide out from the left to the right. So I want it to be a certain width. So I'll select the state button and you can either set the width manually by dragging out from the right or I can click on it and go to the width option here in the upper control bar and set the width in here. So I'm going to set it to 200 uh, pixels in width. Um, you can make sure that it's not constrained by making sure that these are not locked. Uh, here it's linked and meaning that if you change the width, the height will change as well. But if it's not locked, then uh, the width and the height will change independently. All right, so there we go. We have the state button uh, at 200 pixels in width and we're gonna place it at the side of the site so that it's flush with the side of the, the website. We want it off the page because it's not gonna be visible, but when we click the open button, it's gonna slide uh, from this, uh, from the left into the, the page here. So we want it at the side and the top of the page. So I'll bring it all the way at the top and to the side. And I'll just add some height um, here. Uh, we're gonna change the height with the responsive browser height widget, but just so we can see it a bit better, um, I've added some height to the, to the state button. Okay, so the next one uh, is number four, create an open button. So I'll go ahead and muse and I'll just create a, a, rect a rectangle for the open button. Uh, the open button can be anything. It can be an image. Uh, you can fill the rectangle with an image. Um, it can be text. Um, so anything you'd like. For now, I'm just going to create a simple square for the open button and just select this color for the square. All right, so there we have the open button. Um, and let's see the next step. Uh, set responsive option of open button and state button to none. So I'm going to place the open button right up here in the upper left hand corner. And we're going to click on the open button. And the resize option, I'm going to click the drop down in the upper control bar and say none. Because I don't want the, the open button or the state button to to resize as the browser width changes. Um, 200 pixels is great for mobile as well. The state button is uh, 200 pixels in width and that'll be fine for mobile as well. They'll click the open button and they'll be able to see the, uh, the menu on the mobile device because most mobile devices aren't less than 200 pixels in width. Okay, so there we set it to none. And if I select the state button, I want to do the same. We can see that the resize option is set to responsive width. I'm going to say none as well for the state button. All right, so that was step five. Step six is pin the open button and the state button with the pinning option in the upper control bar in Adobe Muse. So I want these elements to stay fixed in the browser as the browser as the website scrolls. So with the open button, I'll select it and I'll go to the pinning op option here in the upper control bar and just select the pin in the upper left. Okay, and then I'll do the same for the state button. Select the state button and pin it to the upper left. Perfect. All right, looks good. So that was step six. And step seven, we're gonna add the Muse Motion widget with one motion. So here I'll go to the library panel here to the right. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library. All right, so I'll just open the library panel. And here I'll type in, uh, right in here, I'll type in Motion. And then I'll scroll down and here we have the Muse Motion widget. Uh, it's Muse Motion widget 1.4 uh, with one motion. So here I'll just click, hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse and perfect. So there we have the widget. All right, so the next step, uh, step number eight is set motion start to on click with reverse. So here I'll open the Muse Motion widget by clicking on this little, uh, this blue circle with the arrow. So I'll click there and we want to set the motion start. So if we look at the widget options, it says select motion start. So here I'll click the drop down and I'll click on on click with reverse. So basically what this does, so here we have on load, on hover, on hover with reverse, on click, I'll click with reverse and on scroll. So on click with reverse, what it does is that it'll trigger the motion uh, forward when you click and then when you click again, it'll uh, trigger the motion in reverse. So we'll have that effect of the, of the uh, state button going from left to right and then when you click again it'll go from right to left to close the state button all right so we have on click with reverse perfect and then the next setting is set the motion or the next 
uh, step is set the motion settings within the widget. So here I'll open up motion one. Or yeah, we have it right here, motion one. And we want to make sure that motion one is enabled. And then here for the animation start, we want it to go from its current position to the position we set here within the widget. Uh, the transform property, we're going to say translate X. So it moves on the X axis. And the value, we're going to set the value the, to the same size as the width of the state button, because that's what's going to move from left to right. So we're going to set it to 200, because the, the width of the state button is 200 pixels. And then for the unit of measurement, I'm going to say pixels. All right, so it's going to move 200 pixels on the X axis. We can leave the transform origin X and Y at 50 and 50. The duration, I'm going to make it a bit quicker. So I'm going to say one second so that motion will last one second. The delay, we don't need a delay or a repeat or a repeat delay. And here we can set the easing options. So I'm going to leave the easing options uh, just as they are now. We're going to play with this a bit later to add uh, some different easing and different animations for the menu. Uh, you can also say ease none, ease in, ease in out, and ease out. So we'll play uh, a bit with this um, after uh, we, we've gotten the menu to open and we'll just you know add a few different easing options there uh, to, to really customize the menu. All right, so that's it for step nine, which is set the motion settings within the widget. So here we have motion one and we've set all the, all the uh, settings, translate X uh, at 200 pixels. So yeah, 200 pixels. If you had the menu on the right side, you'd enter in negative 200, so it goes from right to left. And uh, yeah, I'll talk a bit more about adding it on the right in a second. Uh, but yeah, so we have all the settings there. So step 10 is apply graphic style names from the Muse Motion widget to the open button and state button. So before we do that, I'm gonna open the Muse Motion widget. And if we notice in the Muse Motion widget, we have graphic style name and we have trigger graphic style name. So the graphic style name uh, is motion one, and this is what we want we want to apply to the state button. And the trigger graphic style name is also motion one. Um, we we want to change this because I don't want the state button to trigger itself. I want the open button to trigger the state button. So we're going to apply motion one to the state button, and we're going to change the trigger graphic style name to trigger one, and we're going to assign this graphic style name to the open button. All right, so we have the trigger graphic style name and the motion graphic style name. All right, so now I'll open the graphic styles panel. It's here on the right. And if you don't see the graphic styles panel, you can go to window and click on graphic styles right there. All right, so I'll go ahead and open, or first I'll select the open button because we're, we're gonna apply the trigger one graphic style name to the open button. Then I'll go to the graphic styles panel. And right down here, we have this icon that looks like a piece of paper. Uh, with a folded corner in the bottom left and this will create a new graphic style for the element so here i'll click that icon then we have a new graphic style called style within the graphic styles panel i'll double click to open yep the the graphic styles uh, panel dialog box and here i'll rename it to trigger one uh, because that's the trigger graphic style name within the muse motion widget so when i click on this element i want it to trigger the state button so we're going to assign the motion one graphic style name to the state button. So here I'll select the state button and I'll create another graphic style name by clicking on this icon here and I'll double click on style. And here we have the graphic style dialog box and I'll type in motion one. Okay. And then I'll click okay. So now the open button has a graphic style name trigger one and the state button has the graphic style name motion one and they're right here within the graphic styles panel. All right, so now let me go ahead and preview and see how it looks. So I'll go to file, preview page and browser. And if I click, and just like that, we have that nice side slide menu, looks good. All right, so the next step um, is to, step number 11 is add responsive browser height widget and apply to state button. So here I'll go back to the library panel here to the right and I'll type in responsive browser height. Okay, and here we have the responsive browser height widget. So I'll just click, hold and drag and place into Adobe Muse. All right, so here we have the graphic style name and the height within the browser. So we know that the state button has the graphic style name motion one. So all we have to do here is change the graphic style name to motion one. And just like that, we've applied 100% height to the state button. So I'll go ahead and preview, file, preview page in browser. 
and I'll open and just like that we have that full height uh, size slide menu I can scroll and because we have it pinned in the upper left and the open button is pinned as well it opens the state button there perfect all right so let's move on to the next step which is uh, step number 12 which is adding menu from Adobe Muse to the state button uh, any element can be added to the state button so I'll go ahead and add a menu so I'll go to object right up here I'll go to insert widget then menu and then I'll add a vertical menu okay and I'll just place it here and then for the menu widget options for the menu type I'll select manual so it doesn't inherit any of the top level pages or child pages from the plan of the website and we can ma manually add menu items all right so I'll just do something like this I can go ahead and place it within the state button you'll notice that it's going to be placed within the state button when the outline of the state button becomes uh, a thicker or a uh, darker blue or yeah just kind of a more solid blue around it and it's saying hey uh, this this uh, element or uh, this menu is going to be placed within the state button all right so I'll just place it in here and then I'll just add a few menu items in here for the menu. Okay, so I'll just make it a bit wider there and let's go ahead and preview. And I'll open and we can see we have the menu within the state button, looks good. All right, so I'm gonna add a logo here uh, so it looks similar to that first menu I showed at the beginning. So here I'll go to my finder and I have this Illustrator file here. Uh, this is a a logo and kind of a design that I downloaded from pixelbuddha.net. Um, I'll leave a link in the description area below to these different logos and desi designs at uh, pixelbuddha.net. So here I'm just gonna copy this lemon here and I could add some text that says lemon, kind of, you know, recreate this here within Muse and add that text within Muse. Uh, so here I'll just copy this lemon uh, icon and or logo and then just hit Command V to paste and paste it right in Muse. All right, so there we have it, and I can place it within the state button and just really kind of customize my menu by adding different elements and things like that. So let's move on to uh, 13, which is style the state button and menu, uh, because we can see we have this gray color here for the background of the menu. Um, I don't want that gray color for the, for the state button. So here I'll click on the state button. I'll go to the fill option, and I'll change the color to this yellow color here. All right. Perfect, so now we have that color for the menu. So it's just that simple. You can change the colors within the fill option. You could even add an image to the background of the state button. Um, yeah, so everything's really customizable right in Muse. Uh, so you can create your, your uh, side slide menu. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, we've styled the state button and menu. So I'm not gonna style the menu too much. Uh, basically, it's just, you know, uh, formatting the menu within Muse. You know, you can change the text, change the font type, change the color of the menu and things like that. All right, so I'll go ahead and preview, file preview page in browser, and I'll open. There we have that icon and we have the menu. Perfect, I can close it, looks good. So the next step is to add the image cursor widget to the open button, because if we notice here, the cursor is just, um, is, is not a pointer. Usually when you when you hover over an element that you can interact with, it'll join, change into that pointer that has a finger. So I'm just gonna bring in the image cursor widget from the library panel. So I'll type in image cursor, and I'll bring in the image cursor widget. So here I'll click, hold, and drag, place into Adobe Muse, and we're gonna change the graphic style name to trigger one, because that's the graphic style name for the open button. And the cursor type, I want it to be a pointer. Uh, you could select from a few different uh, cursor types here, or you can add an image. If you did add an image, the image would need to be 128 pixels by 128 pixels or less. Uh, but just I just want a uh, simple pointer, uh, so I'll just add it there. And now when I preview and I click, we can see it turns into a pointer, letting the user know that you can interact with this button here. So again, the open button can be anything, you know, text, uh, an image, anything you'd like for the open button. And just like that, we have the side slide menu. All right, looks good. And step number 15 is done. So that is how you add a so side slide menu in Adobe Muse using the Muse Motion widget and the state button within Muse and the responsive browser height widget uh, as well. And then we added the menu here from Adobe Muse to add a nice menu to the side slide menu. All right, so I'll just quickly show how to add it to the right side. 
Um, so I'll just here place it on the right. And all we have to do here, and I can place this on the right as well. Here we just have to change this, the uh, pinning. So I'll change the pinning to the upper right. And here the same for the side slide menu. I'll change it to the upper right. And then for the Muse Motion widget, we want it to go from the right to the left. So I'll just open it, open Motion 1, and just say negative 200. All right. And I'll go ahead and preview. And when I click, it opens from the right. So it's just that simple. You want to enter in negative 200 so it comes in from the right to the left. And I'm going to go ahead and place it back on the left because there's a few other things I want to go over, like the easing options and things like that. So I'll just select both of these and pin it to the upper left. And we'll change it to uh, 200 instead of negative 200. All right, so let's play with the easing options a bit. If we wanted a bit more animation to the, to the opening of the side slide menu, we could just go into the easing. And here I'm going to select bounce. It's kind of a really animated uh, opening. And we'll leave the easing type, or we'll change it to ease in and out. All right, so now if I preview, and I click, it bounces in. So it's, you know, that's quite a bit of animation. Uh, it could be what you're going for. That's uh, what your site kind of looks like if you have that type of animation for your site. All right, so I'll change it back here. Uh, you can make it slower. I'm going to change it back to power one, and we'll leave it at ease and out. The duration, I'm going to set it to two. And I'll go ahead and preview in the browser. And when I open, it opens up really slowly. All right, and let's do a, a bit quicker. I'll say uh, 0.5, and I'll go ahead and preview, and it opens up very quickly. All right, I do like that there. All right, I'll go ahead and change it back to one second. Okay, so I'll say one here. All right, looks good. So that's it for adding a slide side slide menu uh, in Adobe Muse with the Muse Motion widget. Uh, it's a really fun menu, and yeah, it's a really nice way to, to present a menu in Adobe Muse. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, that's how I created uh, this site here. So we can see I added a different uh, bit of different easing here, and it opens up really quickly. Uh, this was just styling within uh, Adobe Muse for the menu. I changed the different states. If you want me to create a video tutorial on how I styled this, let me know. Uh, but yeah, I was just changing the states for the menu items and the text within the menu items. Uh, then we have the scroll show here. Uh, I used the scroll show widget to reveal these images. And I will be doing a video tutorial on the scroll show widget on how to reveal elements on scroll. Yeah, with the scroll show widget. All right, looks good. So that's it for this video tutorial, creating a side slide menu in Adobe Muse with the Muse Motion widget. So to get access to the Muse Motion widget and the responsive browser height widget, you can go to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for $39 a year. Here we have the Muse Motion widget. And here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for $39 a year. Here are the features within the Muse Motion widget. Uh, this video will be in the, in the GSAP and Adobe Muse series. And we also have the responsive browser height widget, which is down here. Right here, we have the responsive browser height widget, and we have the image cursor within the shop as well. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. I'll just scroll back up here. Yeah, that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. Muse for you, awesome websites without code.